Hey guys, we're back. We've got two more players down in the future at match area. Before we jump down there, we're going to talk about our child's play events. Um, a annually, every year, uh, Forest One Comics and Gaming does an entire weekend of gaming charity events where all the entry fees and all the donations we take in go are donated to the West Virginia University Children's Hospital. This year we're doing that the weekend of December 3rd, so Friday's the 2nd onto uh, Sunday the 4th, and we have a bunch of events going on, not just Magic, yep. um, Super Smash Brothers, X-Wing, Dice Masters, Pokemon, we have a bunch of events going on, but uh, talking about Magic events specifically, we have several different ones, and the first one I want to talk about is our Commander Marathon. Saturday night, starting at 9, we're going to be open all night, probably till very early sunday morning Ugh, we're, it's gonna be so long it's a long night but it's a lot of fun but then um, have to work the next players who want to register for door prizes make a minimum ten dollar donation to the charity and then you're live for do door prizes which we will give away at the top of every hour so starting yep. at nine o'clock then from ten o'clock and eleven we'll be giving away lots of awesome door prizes the first thing that we're going to announce is we have a uh, Planes Chase anthology set that we will be giving away that night. Yeah, because it just releases the week before, the week, the week of? The week of or the week before. Right. So we have that that we'll be giving away and more awesome things that we'll be talking about as the night goes on and more to, to announce on Facebook going up to the event. Make sure you're following us at Forestman, Forestman Comics. Forestman Comics and Gaming on Facebook. And yep. uh, if you're not in our Magic group, Team Four Horsemen MTG definitely join that Facebook group. I update that all the time. About a billion notifications a day. About a billion, approximately. All right, so let's watch some uh, magical gatherings here. Uh, so it looks like uh, <laughs> Brian has stepped away. Yeah, it looks like he was going to ask us if they could start. Yeah, but the foot stomp has occurred, and it looks like the players have resolved their mulligans and they're ready to go. Brains on the play, playing Black Cleave Cliffs and Pass. Sean's on OBS on Rally tonight. And he's going to play with his lands yes. in front, and I'm going to go fix him on it. Okay, you go ahead and... I'm going to wait until he makes a mistake, then I can embarrass him on camera. <laughs> I don't think you're going to embarrass him, but... You're I'm just going to forcibly move his cards in the other direction. Right, you go ahead and do that. Right. I will. All right, so Brain, he just passes back to Brain. Brain's fetching Verdant Catacombs. That's a Chandra Torch of Defiance in his hand. Yeah, he looks... I like that card. It's a cool card. I haven't really seen much of So he's fetching from 20 down to to 17. Thank you, Brain. And playing Dark Confidant past the turn. Sean plays Forest into Voyaging uh, Seder. And then we're going to go move his cards. Ryan's going to go take care of that. All right. Voyaging Seder, if you do not know the text on that one, that is a popper all-star, and it was not Voyaging Seder. Bleh. It is Seder Wayfinder. We're going to bring up that one because you don't see it too much in modern. It gets played a lot in Popper, and it was played in it was played in the standard format that it was a part of. So Seder Wayfinder, one in a green for a 1-1. One, one. When it enters the battlefield, reveal the top four cards of your library. You may put a land card from among them into your hand. Put the rest in the graveyard. I'm back, guys. So Sean is playing the the rally deck that uses its graveyard a, a lot. It plays uh, cards like Rally the Ancestors and Return to the Ranks. So it uses its graveyard as a resource. So Seder Wayfinder is almost like a two mana one one that puts a land in your hand right. and then like three three cards in your hand being your graveyard. Exactly. Uh, so also Sean hit two Rally the Ancestors off of that. So. That's really rough for him because that already takes away two of his outs. Right. He may be playing Return to the Ranks as well. Which... Uh, another Voyaging or Seder Wayfinder. I keep saying Voyaging Seder. Ah, uh, because Voyaging Seder, we've seen a lot on our camera. Yeah, for sure. Kevin. So. Mm-hmm. All right, so he... No lands, but he revealed a, a Noble Hierarch and a... He, there was a Blood Artist in there. Yeah, so I think he's on the Sacrifice. He may have, like, a Bloodthorn Vampire or something. Brain missed a... Land drop. Sean has not, and he got to play a mana jerk, so he's got a pretty nice mana advantage here. Right. Uh, so Sean's just kind of steamrolling right along here. Termagoyf is just going to get eaten up by these satyrs blocking it. Like, he doesn't really care. Yeah, the, sa the satyrs have done their job, Like, and he's, they're going to come back at some point. Exactly. So he, they The can... only problem is with it is, well, it is, it has to reveal. So 
There's a possibility Sean could deck himself with Seder Wayfinders. <laughs> it's possible. Probably not likely, and then but possible. Brian will win by Mill. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. Brian is not a fan of Mill, by the way, guys. I've not seen Joan win by Mill. That's that's interesting. Yeah, there's no like. Okay, so Tarmogoyf. Blood Throne Vampire type, or not Blood Throne, but Blood Chief Ascension shenanigans yeah. going on here. So Tarmogoyf comes across for, I believe it's a three four. I think we have Creature Land Sorcery. Uh, it's Creature Land Instant, I believe. Oh, okay, so three four. Because Rally is a instant. So Brain finds his land. It's going to play Stomping Ground Tapped. Yep, plays it tapped, plays a Grim Flare. That Grim Flare. from the Dark Confidant. Right, Grim Flare is a pretty amazing magic card. I remember uh, Brian not being completely sold on it at first, uh, and then he played it, and he's like, oh, man, this card is sweet. Yeah, I've, I've yet to try it myself, but... Uh, about the one thing I was thinking about playing it in is in Legacy in Four Color Alone. Yeah, I could I could see testing it. Uh, speaking of four color loan, I'm trying to start picking that up. Maybe a little bit before I can afford everything, but you can borrow it from me. Yeah, I just eventually want to own it myself. It's a really, really cool fun deck. Or I buy ports. <laughs> yeah, ports are expensive. Did you know that? Uh, so I looked up death and taxes on Moto. Okay. And it's the same price. The ports are. No, the whole entire deck. Oh. Well, because that, of ports. That's sweet. It's not sweet. It's twelve hundred dollars in paper and online. I was being sarcastic about yeah, it. Oh my god, it's terrible. Like port, like a place that of ports is like nine hundred ticks or something. Oh wow. Yeah, it, it's absurd. Uh, okay, so return to the ranks. ranks. There All we right. go. I think that I think that's one that's worthy of being brought up on the screen. Yeah, here comes return to the ranks. So basically, he's doing return to the ranks for two, I believe. And he is basically getting everything back. Right. Oh, so it's convoke. Oh, so it's X target creatures. So he gets to only bring back four creatures with it, but only he... four. <laughs> only four. So he brings back uh, the satyr, a bird, a viseraseer, and a blood artist. So you right. know, just a casual four for one. <laughs> exactly. But now that he has the blood artist out, like that makes the hits that you're gonna take from Tarmogoyf and. The Grim Flare, not as bad as they could be. Bob reveals a uh, Bloodstained Mire and Brain draws. What did he draw? I missed it. Uh, uh, mountain. Mountain. Probably start, the worst just, card in his deck. Yeah, he's just recently started playing a Mountain to make his burn match up a little better. Right. And I think he's up to five basics, now two swamps, two forests, and a Mountain. Which seems like a lot for he, the... He hates losing to burn, though. Right. Uh, it also... Which Sean typically I don't plays. know if Brian's on the spice of... Let's play the Blood Moons in the sideboard. I don't think so, but I could be wrong. Uh, I know that he had talked about it in the past, that he it was something that a couple other Jun lists have started to do. Yeah, Blood Jun. <laughs> typically, you bring in your Blood Moons against Jun because yeah. they're just stupid good. Stupid um, greedy. Because the, the mana base is really, really greedy. Okay, uh, so Abrupt Decay on Viserys here. Which is good because if he get if Sean gets to keep that Viserys here, he all of a sudden he starts to get sacking these inconsequential creatures and draining with the blood artist and like all sorts of crazy things happens. But Brain's gonna press the issue, try to kill the Viserys here, here, and if Sean wants to start sacking off creatures, he has to do it now. He doesn't have the option to do it later, so he's right. just gonna do it once, triggering the blood artist one time. And he's going to get the scribe one for each one of these. Uh, probably just looking for a Rally of the Ancestors. Yeah, some sort of business spell. So this is, the Rally deck is, is a creature deck, but it's a combo deck. Right. So it's got its its engine cards, like mana engine cards, like its mana dorks. And then it's got its graveyard engine cards, like the Seder. It's got its like draining engine cards like the blood artist and then it's got its business spells return to the ranks right uh rally the ancestors collected company i i presume because i lent him those yeah um so did sean send you this deck list kind of like yeah he sent me the deck list and i didn't have time to pull out all the cards for right. him unfortunately which i had most of it uh but i did pull out a lot of the cards i believe he had most of it already from what i i, I was able to I'm tell mainly lent him expensive stuff like noble hierarchs right and collected companies just like the like typical green he doesn't usually play green so like the, the yeah, green he is, cards though. he needed 
is not a green mage. Nope. He is a uh, blue red. No, I would say Grixis. Yeah, I mean he, he likes to reanimate a lot of things. Oh yeah, maybe blue black. I mean, like, reanimate he, in he, all formats. Blue and either blue red, blue black, or a blue red black. You know, he yeah. likes blue. Uh, he does definitely like to reanimate basically anything you possibly can. Um, looks like Brain's gonna go ahead and mill two of his cards with the Grim Player to kind of clear off the top of his library, so Bob will be able to not hit a a spell here uh, and not kill himself with it. Yeah, that's a nice combo, Dark Confidant and Grim Player. You get to set right. that up a little bit. And Brain has always bragged that his uh, his Bobs are nice to him, but I mean, you can't really brag when you've got Grim Player to set him up. All right, Lightning Bolt on the Blood Artist. So the Blood Artist and the Viserysia were definitely, like, the problem creatures there. Right. And I, I think that's correct by uh, by Brian correctly identifying that those cards were the problem cards here. Uh, okay. It looks like he has a Voice Resurgence and, and blood another Blood Artist, artist and, and a, a Cutthroat. Yeah, so ooh, that's good. But he can only play the Cutthroat or the Blood Artist due to his mana problems yeah, being... Yeah, he, he hasn't missed any land drops, but his only black source currently is the Bops. Good old Bops. The bird. Yep. Bird. So, Sean's probably just going to play out the voice. I would probably just play the cutthroat here. Mm, uh, yeah. It's got one point of power. Like, it, that doesn't seem like it's relevant, but it does stop the the uh, the Dark Confidant from being a little frisky. I actually really like Sean's spot here because it seems like, you know, Brain's killing all his uh, important creatures. But he just keeps reloading. He keeps reloading. His life total's really high. If he draws a Return of the Ranks or any of his business spells, he's in a really good spot. And it looks like Brian Huffman just found probably the best card in the matchup in Scavenging Goose. Yeah, Scavenging Goose definitely turns But he only has he one, only green, one green, source. green source. Yeah. So Scavenging Goose isn't... Oh, uh, yeah, he has two. Right, but he only ha he'll only have one green source available this turn. Yeah. So... Uh, oh, now possibly... Yeah. Yeah, but Another green source. he can get a green source off that Bloodstained Mire, but he's going to have to take three damage to do right. it. Right, so basically he'll basically lose one off of it. Yeah, and Sean does have a Blood Artist in play, so this is, it's risky business. Yeah. Tom Cruise is skidding across the floor in his underwear as we speak. Or is it Naked Oiled Man? Yeah, I mean, maybe both. Both. It's hard to say. All right, in for two with the Bob. Sean's probably going to take that. Yeah, I He's probably down would. to sixteen. We missed one point of life gain there from the blood artist. And Brian's really just trying to figure out what he needs to do here, uh, counting up his mana, trying to figure out. He's got a Liliana he could play, and he could fetch a swamp. But I mean, Liliana. But if you play the Liliana, much. you just sacrifice the one of your. The, you probably just sacrifice the voice, right? The no like, or and then the you have a four higher. four. Yeah, I mean, you could do the noble or the or the voice. It's. And there's a collected company. This seems... Uh, well, this could be over real quick. Yeah, I mean, if he finds, like, Viserysir and something. If he finds Viserysir and another Blood Artist effect, then... It's probably game over. So we got Bird, Voice, voice. Tide Hollow Sculler's not bad. So probably, like, Voice, Tide Hollow Sculler. Although he might get the Bird for a second Black Mana, but probably not. Right. He only really needs the one Black Mana. Yeah. Uh, I'd probably only... get a second voice and the Tide Hollow Scholar. Uh, yeah, and maybe would... eat the Chandra out of Brian's hand. Uh, that seems like the best thing, just because it can kill anything that's on the board at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, it just comes down. And it's like, hey, that's dead. Okay, so voice Tide Hollow Scholar, trigger Tide Hollow Scholar on the stack. Tiger after, Brain. After Sean makes sure that he sets up his top of his the bottom of his library correctly from the voice from the collected company. Yep. Uh, then the trigger will resolve, and he gets to look at Brain. the hand of two, two dark, bobs, two bobs, a Chandra and a Liliana. I'm definitely taking the Chandra here. Yeah. If I was Sean, because the the Liliana doesn't do anything. Right. It it literally does nothing here. And he wants Brain to play those bobs. Right. Exactly. And then, the Chandra actually just comes down and kills something. Yeah. Like. I mean, technically the Liliana does too, but it but, gives it gives Sean the choice. Right. And. Definitely, now that you have two voices, like you definitely kill off. Oh yeah, like if he had, if he had a Viser if he gets a Viserys here on his next draw step, this is. Well, so now he's got the two blood artist effects, 
so if Brian swings in with any of this stuff, like he's just gonna double, he's just gonna block with both of his voices. Right. They're gonna get even bigger. It's gonna drain him for four life. So I believe Brian, Brian plays scavenging news immediately eats a blood artist, puts a counter on the scoozing, should be up, should be at eight now. I think he, well, he also fetched, so okay, I think so he just stayed just, at yeah. seven. Missed the fetch, but yeah, that's correct. All right, so, and good guy Brian's leaving up his cards for us. Yep. All right, so reveals Inquisition goes down to six. I think they're also just kind of saving it for time-wise, uh, leaving up your hand. Te you actually just don't have to do that technically, but it's kind of nice if it's just F and M or whatever. Yeah, it's good. It's good for your opponent. It's good for the coverage. Like it also helps you remember what cards they know about. Exactly. Yeah, I've seen people actually like hold cards upside down in their hand, and the upside down ones are the ones their opponents know about. Okay. That's kind of confusing for me. Yeah, uh, I I do a lot of card flicking in my hand. Uh, I don't know where I got that particular. I played against bad habit from, but <laughs> I played against Kent Cutter at SCG Philly, and he did that because I was thought seizing him, and he would flip the cards around in his hand to ha the, the ones that I knew about upside down. Mm. He totally like, blew my mind. Yeah, so now the Inquisition is just terribly bad here because Sean played out his hand. I think it's just terrible in this matchup to begin with. Right. Uh, oh, you want to make me discard my creature? <laughs> cool, I'll bring it back. Yeah. Uh, so here comes another Scavenger Goose, which I said it's probably just the best card in the matchup. Yeah, but redundant copies of it isn't really good. Right. So... This kind of allows Sean to just kind of free roll attack in with the voices. Yeah. Um, now, Sean really needs to find a Visser Seer here. Uh, Visser Seer looks like it just wins the game. Cause... Yeah, but if, if he block, like, Brain is put in this position where he has to think, uh, well, if he blocks the Visser Seer, then he takes damage because they die. And then Sean has these giant creatures. If he doesn't block them, he's taking four damage. Like, I, I like the, the right, attack. Right, so. So I think you just attack with the voices here. Yeah, you do. And you probably also t attack with the title of Scholar. Sean's probably like, attack put creatures. I don't know what this is. Put lethal on board. Oh, he's just going to attack, attack with the bird for one. Okay, maybe we're both wrong and sure. Sean doesn't play a lot of creatures. And then so, and then, so he's going to eat one in response. He's going to eat probably another one. Like I, I, I guess if you attack... If you tackle the voices, like they could get blocked by a big scoose, but then you still get the, the, the tokens. Yeah, you still get the tokens, and you still get the triggers the, from the blood art. Right, and the tokens are going to be larger than the voices were originally. Yeah. So, like, I think it's fine just attacking with them. I agree. Uh, Brain gains one. Maybe we missed a life gain somewhere. No, I, it was oh, from he the ate scoos. two creatures. Yeah, it was from okay. the scoose. Uh, looks like Brian drew a. A terminate here yeah uh i think sean's just gonna take this too he doesn't really like he's just gonna let he's gonna try to bank on the the bob killing huffman so so sean should be at 14 from that attack right looks like he just forgot to hey, <laughs> he's a third voice it's pretty good yeah Counting out the creatures, it looks like, see how much life he can potentially gain. He has three green sources. Right, so he's Potentially gonna, four. Looks like he's going to eat three of them, which is fine. Actually... Four gr green? Well, he may, not, he may not have another stomping ground or uh, a burn tomb to fetch. All right, so now here comes... Yeah, I, I like this attack a lot. So two blocks. So two you, blocks. So you get two tokens, and you get triggering the blood artist... And the yeah, customer, so you're just right? gonna drain for four. Drain him for four, so brain's down to three. So then, like, and Sean's back up to eighteen. Yeah, I, I, this game might be over if he would have attacked with those voices last That's turn. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I think he, I even would have just attacked with the tide holder scholar as well. Honestly, guess, probably. Uh, looks like we've got some uh, Pokemon. Oh, okay, a Bulbasaur. And an and Ivysaur. An Ivysaur. Now, that's like... Now, I don't like that because both those tokens are the same power. So, why are you saying one of those tokens is better than the other? I don't well, like that brain. Yeah. It should definitely just be like two Bulbasaurs, two Ivysaurs. For sure. Or like a Bulbasaur and a Charmander. Something on equal plane. Yeah. Yeah. But really, are Bulbasaur and Charmander really on equal plane? I don't know. So, brain <laughs> fetching... The, but, he didn't... Ad Adjust, his... Neither players adjusted their uh, life totals. Yeah, so Brain should be at two. 
Uh, we'll see what happens. He may have eaten some cards. Yeah, uh, it looks no, like he, he ate. Did, so he's up to five. Okay. But now you're just going to attack him with the voices. We really need oh. to. Okay, and so down to four. Down to four. Table spotter would be nice, but we're low budget here. Yeah, we don't One have of the luxury days. of that. One day. To put to have four people to run an F and M, this seems a little excessive. Not to mention the person on the counter, so five people. Yeah. I mean some of us are just doing this and we don't clock in, but that's okay. Um but while we're here, let's go ahead and give a shout out to Aaron who's on the counter and Kurt who's downstairs managing the F and M. Thanks guys. We wouldn't yep. be, we would not be up here in the booth without you. And also, I'm not going to shout out to Ron because he's not here. Yeah. Our fearless leader is pretty – a lot of fear today. It's probably playing with Poppy, so I won't – She was in here earlier today. Was it, she? Yeah. Uh, it was great to see her. Uh, she was awake this time. Usually when Poppy is here, she's asleep. Uh, for those of you who don't know who Poppy is, Poppy is – Ron Davis is our fearless leader's granddaughter uh, who just came to the world with us about a month or two ago. Mm, October? October. Was it early maybe October? It was, maybe it was September. September. Yeah. Regardless, she's a little baby. This autumn. Yes. We like her a lot. And yes, she is named after Poppy from League of Legends. Don't tell Deanna. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> Don't tell Deanna. Yeah, my son... I, we got my son Drake's name from Nathan Drake from Uncharted. So, but but then again, my wife knows about that. So well, that's good. Yeah, it's also just a good name. All right, so Brain is down to two. Sean is up to twenty. I think Brain just realized that he brought himself to two with that lightning bolt. Yeah. I mean, like you definitely like need to get those creatures off the board. That was but... like a reverse lightning helix. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I mean, this brain's just in a bad spot. There's another together. terminate. So terminate, and kill the so blood artist. Go to one. Does it trigger it when it when it yeah it dies? says when it sells itself or another creature dies. Okay. So he should be at one. I played a lot of blood artist in my day back when it was standard. Yeah. Yeah. No, you are you are completely correct on that. So brain is at one, and they they have adjusted. Right. Blood artist is kind of an interesting card. Uh. However, it does not get around Leyline of Sanctity, uh, which is kind of reason why they've also playing the Zill Park Cutthroat yeah, because it says each opponent. Leyline pops up sometimes in this format. Right. Uh, especially with Burn being such a thing. Oh, yeah. Uh, Burn's real good. Leyline also surprisingly really good against Jund. Is, uh, is Sean going to kill him with a flying bird? Uh, no, no he's because he's got those scab mangoes. There's some life to gain here. So. It has gotten a little convoluted. But now you have... You still have the two voice tokens. And potentially a third one coming up. Right. What did Sean draw for the turn? I don't know. I'm assuming it wasn't a collected company or anything that just could just could Kill. win. Right. right. So attack with a bird. He, it looks like he, so he looks like he had already... So brain has won. to gain some life here. I think he already did prior to that. Okay. Uh, so prior to doing that, I think he, he went up to two and now he's going up to three, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And Sean's at 20 something. I think he's still at 20. Eat your state or wayfinder. Okay. Dark confidant trigger. So brains at four now. No, it should still be. Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, so this is with the. The Dark Confidant on the stack. Okay, yes. Yeah, so Basically, go... because if he hits Kalitas, he just dies. Yeah. Or Chandra. Okay, so he reveals Inquisition, goes back down to three. Yep. No, no, no he's at four. So he, because he, because he went up to five, so he, so if he revealed okay. Kalitas, he wouldn't die. Right. Uh, it may be okay to fire off one Inquisition here. Uh, yeah, I mean. I don't know what Sean would have in, would have kept in his hand that he wouldn't have just played, but right, but can definitely find out. Uh, he could tap that black cleave cliffs and it won't hurt him scavenging use wise. Exactly, uh, I think he's thinking about Liliana in his hand. I don't like Liliana. I don't. I mean, and Brian doesn't even know honestly. Yeah, I mean this is this is a rough spot. So he's just gonna pass. It looks like so Sean's gonna draw. It's, it's rally. Doesn't do anything. Yeah. There's no creatures left. 
Yeah, because the scavenging uses. Right. He really wanted like a collected company, so he's gonna play Overgrown Tomb. Brian feels like he's in the driver's seat here, just kind of dancing. I don't know. Like these scavenging users have stayed alive for way too long. But it's, that's the thing, though. The rally Absin rally deck doesn't really have a whole lot of cards to. Right. They they don't want to bog themselves down with removal. It probably it may not play any in the main board. Right. It does go back to that turn where Sean declined to attack with his voice of resurgence. Right. We might be in game two if that was so the case. So we also have another attack from a bird. Then they eat the last two cards. It looks like. Maybe I don't know what the actual life totals are. Ooh, Grim Player hit. So, so we're there. We go. Thank you, Sean. Thank you very much, Mr. Carroll, for bringing it back up. Uh, so we've got him down to two. Uh, I think Brian is just trying to reliable, reliably see if he can just kind of swing in. I think he wants that Bob to die. Yeah, and Sean just nope. Nope. Gonna let it happen. Take two. Go to seventeen. All right, he was now still he may, declaring attackers. Now, he may block this scavenging news. Uh, yeah. I mean, unfortunately, he doesn't have the... Uh, yeah, so he's going to block the block with the Noble. Take two and go to 17. Oh, no, no he's going to block with the voice and get another voice token. I'm not sure what Brain's doing here. I think we're still in the block and damage step. And Brain had maybe moved on to main phase two. Right. So, actually, Sean's just going to double block the scavenging ooze. Uh, yeah, killing scavenging ooze is, is good. Or, but... Well, I don't know what's going on. All right, let's, let's see what happens, and then we'll... They keep going back and forth. They don't know what they want to do. Okay. Okay. So, voice blocks Scoos. Sean gets a third token. Right. He's down to 17 from taking two damage from the Dark Confidant. Correct. Okay, so, so now Brain, we have... Brain plays Grim Player and passes. Yep. Venusaur. We have fully evolved. No, there's still Mega EX. That doesn't count. There's EX and Mega EX still left. I don't know what those things are. Exactly. Nobody does. Not okay. even Poke. We also have Pokemon. Pokemon. Our first ever Friday, Friday Night, Night Pokemon. Pokemon. Um, organized by Brian Strakel and Dane Lumen. Right. Just to try to get some more people in. Because sometimes, usually we play it on Saturdays. For those of you who also play Pokemon in the local area. Uh Saturday is kind of a little rough to get out here, especially when it's, you know... Game day. Game day, like it is this week, even though it's a night game. Uh, so if Magic, you know, we can probably get some people in here to play some Pokemon as well. If, yeah, we've got a lot going... We also have Force of Will tournaments on Friday nights. Yep. So there's a lot a lot of reasons to come in. And if you're not into card games, you're probably not watching us. But just in case you are, I'll let you know. You can also come in and check out our, our computer gaming lounge, the Arena which has state-of-the-art gaming computers and lots of games. We've got League of Legends, Counter-Strike, World of Warcraft, lots of great stuff. Yep, you name it, we probably have it on the computers. And even if we don't have it on the computers, we can probably get it on the computers. Yeah, just got to ask for on real nice. we got Star Wars The Old Republic, Final Fantasy fourteen on there too, I believe. Yep. Magic Online is the one that I play. Uh, Hearthstone. Hearthstone, of course. Uh, Eternal, the new card game from Direwolf Digital, which is still in beta, I believe, Patrick is also on there. Sullivan work on that. Uh, Patrick Sullivan is working on it currently for past beta. Uh, the big names working on that are Luis Scott Vargas, yep, uh, Conley Woods, yep, Lost and, in the Woods, yep, and also uh, Michael Jacob. Okay, cool. Sean is down to thirteen. It looks like Brain might be trying to turn the tide That's here. That's what I was saying. Uh, his bobs have been really good to him. One collected company, though, like if if Sean can collect a company into so the Seer and Blood Artist. So Sean just kind of plays, or he just discarded the rally. Yeah, he because it does nothing. Brain casting Inquisition. Uh, That's, what is that? Uh, the Seer. Is that another Seer? Yeah. So now he just needs like a Blood Artist. So, so. Bird's gonna attack at Liliana or Brain. I probably attack brain. Makes them have to eat a creature. Yeah. Pretty soon there ain't gonna be no creatures left to eat. I. Uh, Sean has to block now, so he's gonna yeah. the point where he has to block. So it looks like 
he took the one and went down to one and then gained one with the scavenging. He was going back up to two. He reels Black Cleave Cliffs to Dark Confidant. Which right, especially because now that he's starting to hit with the Grim Players, like it's just lying in the set at the top of his library. So Brain attacks with Bob Fadant and two Scuses because there doesn't seem... Uh, no, he's, no, he's Alpha. Alpha. I think that's enough to probably just go ahead and kill it. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to... Sean's going to have to make some chump blocks here. Yep. And it looks like Brain might be getting that Chandra back. Yep. Oh. And the Raging Ravine. Okay, yeah. We're approaching a 30-minute game one here. <laughs> All right, now Brain says, Sean, now you have to think. And we're going to game Sean's two. Sean's like, I'm not thinking. I I'm cannot stupid. believe that Brian Huffman wins game one, is up a game on, with Jund over Sean Carroll. I think those two rally. early... Uh, Rally the Ancestors off the top were really key there. The Return of the Ranks? Well, no, no, no. The Where he hit the Rally of the Ancestors off of the first state oh, of yeah, Wayfinder. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So I think that was really key there as far as causing things to so you, go Brian's way. So you see Brain very quickly bring in Anger of the Gods, Night of Souls, Betrayal. Like, he has a plan. I, yep. do, I do not think game two is going to go as well for Sean as game one did go. And that and that is saying... I'm talking about a game that Sean lost. But. Yeah. Uh, looks like Brian is bringing out all of his Planeswalkers, which I yeah, totally like, agree Liliana with. Liliana is terrible. There were points where Chandra could have been good, but I don't think it's a card you want. He's also taking out his Inquisitions and his Thought Seasons, which I think is completely correct. Yep, I agree. I mean, probably the best he could hope to do is get an early Inquisition and make him discard one of his business, like like a Return of the Ranks or a Rally. Yep. And even then, like Inquisition doesn't hit the Collected Companies, and late game it's he will have already cast them. So I think Brain has a great sideboarding play in here. I I don't know about Sean. I'm I'm not even sure what Sean like. I did see a list from Sean earlier. Maybe. Oh, he's also bringing in his four Leyline of the Voids. Oh uh, yeah, this this seems. It seems like it's going to be... But Sean can just be on the creature value plan. Granted, so the way that Blood Artist and Azul Park Cutthroat word it, um, they don't do anything in this matchup if there's a ley line in the void mm -hmm. in play because die is not technically a keyword. It's a keyword that's not a keyword, unfortunately. Um, so they have to die to actually go to the graveyard, and if there's no graveyard, then they don't die. That's so correct. they don't trigger. Much of the way that uh, Voice of Resurgence or um, excuse me, Kitchen Finks works. Uh, if they can't come back, then they don't get their their other trigger. So one moment, guys. Ryan's rambling a little bit because I'm looking up something. <laughs> While while we have a spare moment, I'm I'm taking the chance to look something up. Now, out of Sean's sideboard here, uh, who knows what it's actually going to be? There's probably some enchantment removal because he has to kind of expect Leyline of the Voids or Rest in Peace type effects. Uh, so there's probably like a Back to Nature, which actually also hits the Knight of Souls Betrayal. So, which is also really really cool. Um, but. Outside of that, I don't know what... I guess he could play, like, a Reclamation Sage uh, early on. Uh, which would be pretty helpful for him. But outside of that, I don't know really what else Sean can bring in that's going to do any work that's going to help him out significantly in this matchup. Looks like they're going ahead and drawing out their hands. I would assume that Sean wants to be on the play. Uh... Looks like Brian brought us so in Grafdigger's Cage and a Leyline of the Void. So yeah. Yeah, this seems Hold on. seems I've okay. got a Leyline of the Void. Of the void. What do you say to that, Sean? Well, Sean absolutely hates this card. Cause it wrecks almost every deck he plays. Correct. Whether it's Tesserator, whether it's Reanimator. Reanimator. Or Reanimator. Or Reanimator. Or Reanimator. Sean has played um, that deck in all in all three major constructed formats. He can play it currently in all three formats still. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I forgot that's a thing in standard now. Yeah, uh, he can also 
like this is kind of a reanimator deck, so this isn't really much different for Sean here. It's so hey, it does bring creatures from the graveyard into place. Raise a Virch Thicket. Into Birds of Paradise. Birds of Paradise. You so can bop brain on the head. So I think we are just at the I have to <laughs> <laughs> Well, there goes your collecting company. So Sean is on the sideways play now. Put creatures into play and turn them sideways. sideways. Yep. It looks like he has a Noble Hierarch in his hand uh, to go ahead and... Now, if he has a Rex Age here for... I would probably... Yeah, which one do you... Bl probably the Cage, because, like, the it, Ley... It will let your companies go. Yeah, because the Ley Line doesn't hurt, hurt your companies, at least. Like, I don't know if he actually has a Rex Age in his hand, but he's fetching to go towards I, that plan. He has to draw one now, because he can't... He can't company for if he was i don't think he's playing cord but if he was playing cord he can't cord for it right so his deck is shut off both ways right now yep and looks like he just has the hierarch followed by a visitor seer so with three creatures in play he has a total of one power yes so he attacks brian from 20 down to 19 our players are tied here in game two at we're at parity here at parody. and this looks like a <laughs> A collective Collect brutality, yeah. probably out of Brian here. So, and I think he's trying to decide which cards he wants to discard for the collective for, brutality. So he probably, like, duress Sean and kill the Viserys here. It's, you may just discard two and then just go ahead and be like, I'm just going to go ahead and... A little black. Oh, Untap. Oh. It's like we're watching Moto. Float the black, don't float the mana. Okay, so Bloodstained Mire... Uh, get um, so he's going down to sixteen. Yep. To play a grim player, and he's just going to save that collective brutality for a better play. Right. He's probably just going to go ahead and go get the uh, the stomping ground here. Yeah. Yeah. That way he has all three of his colors. Yeah. He's got a third land in his hand, so he's set up. Yeah. So this makes it to where Sean can't just go ahead and start attacking with the visitors here. Mm -hmm. Um. I I like establishing the threat first. You know, right. Sean's probably not playing. If Sean's playing removal, he's playing a very small amount of it. So right. I, I like putting that green player out there. Uh, a Play, blood artist that yeah. doesn't do anything. Mm -hmm. And a voice. a voice that doesn't do anything. Well, he has more power now. And right. more power. And then to that's Sean. what Brian's pointing at the Leyland Void. They do nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, enjoy having two whole additional power in play because the creatures don't die they if they would go to the graveyard the replacement effect of ley line exiles correct so that doesn't trigger a voice's token ability and sean's thinking about just he turning side yeah that's what i said sean is now on the turn them sideways plan turn that visitor seer sideways brian's gonna block because his grim player is a little bit more valuable to him than sean's visitor seer so i think he's okay with that uh, bringing Brian down to 14. He's going to untap. Now he's got an abrupt decay, which, yeah, just going to do even more. Um, so he still, I've seen Brian probably draw this basic mountain more times than he should, particularly in this matchup. Uh, like we said, it's probably the worst land in his deck. Definitely the worst land in his deck. Uh, but, you gotta hedge against burn. We don't really have a whole lot of burn players here. I mean, we have we have a fair amount. Like it, they don't all play it at the same time usually, because right. most of our modern players have at least two decks. But, right. I mean, we have at least three, four, five people who can play it. Yep. Less so now since I I sold mine. I don't loan it out. I, mean, I think Wyatt sold his. Yes, I, Wyatt sold his out, but he doesn't get to come out that much anymore. Yeah, since he's running events at our Waynesburg location in Waynesburg, Pennsylvania, they do. Uh, casual magic on Thursday nights, and they do Friday night magic on Friday. And their Friday night magic is usually popper or draft. Yeah, they do popper or draft. They're trying to get into standard and modern, but mostly it's been a... They play a lot of the casual formats. They play a lot of commander there, too. <laughs> yep. And then for the Clarksburg store, we're still working on getting events started there. Uh, it's a little bit slow going, uh, getting the events to fire the way that we want them to. Yeah, it's always it's always hard to build a community basically from scratch. Right. Uh, that looks like it was a rally of the ancestors or a rally. collected company. Yeah, which rally could, does nothing. Right. Neither just collected company here. I mean, it adds power. Uh, doesn't even do that. Collected. Oh no, because he has the cage in play. 
Yep. It look, it's, it's look at the I, top six I, of your library and put them at the bottom. Sean, of the... Sean's plan here is draw creatures, cast them, attack. Unfortunately for all of Sean's creatures, they're all basically zero ones, two twos, <laughs> two's and one ones. One one. And the, the the draw creatures, cast them, and attack plane is typically bad against Jund anyway. Right. And he doesn't have, like, a Grey Ogre. No, he yeah. doesn't have a three mana 2-2 two, two to just, like, trump this two mana 2-2. Two, two. Which is just getting bigger because it has... He doesn't have Delirium yet, does he? Right. So he's going to attack with the Visitor Seer again for two. Okay. Uh, no blocks. No blocks. There's nothing to block with. Brain didn't consider that block at all because he doesn't have one. Right. Uh, looks like there's still the Abrupt Decay in his hand. I believe that the modes that were chosen for the Collective Brutality was just this, was just kill a creature. Mm-hmm. So. As in, just killed the voice because it was right. a 2 Right, exactly. And he didn't want to take three a turn. Yeah. Which is fine. Yep, logical. Abrupt right, so Decay, Abrupt Decay probably, probably target the Noble Hierarch. Yeah, because then that eliminates the Exalted Trigger as a factor. Right. Mm, Viserys here, that's fine too. I mean, there's even like an argument for the bird because he can't block the bird with the exalted trigger. Correct. But the bird just becomes a storm crow at that point. Yeah. Which is I mean, OP. That's but scary. I, I've. Lots of people have died to that card. Sean could really use a sword of like feast and famine here. And he'd use a maelstrom pulse. Or no, like an austere command on artifacts and enchantments. Uh, yeah, yeah, that'd, that'd be, be strong be real sweet <laughs> yeah and actually like he did have five like he's actually kind of close to casting it before that noble hierarch died yeah can you imagine if he just went austere command modes destroy all artifacts destroy all enchantments uh and then rally the answers <laughs> <laughs> and then brain you dead uh stuff that we'd like to see happen but it wouldn't yeah it's because nick nick leitner isn't here uh dutch two five four uh i if you didn't hear earlier, uh, Brian, Brian Huffman plays the uh, the basic mountain to uh, pl to make his burn matchup better. So he has a red source that he can fetch for that won't deal him damage. I, typically, Jen does not play that card. I ass I assure you that he knows what he's doing. He's won an open. He won uh, SCG Charlotte. Charlotte. I Charlotte believe. at the beginning of this year. Um, so he definitely knows what he's doing with the deck. And he will be the first to tell you he typically wouldn't want to play with it. It's just to make his burn match up a little better. Yep. Oh, sure. And it definitely helps up with, like, the Suicide Zoo deck. Uh, it helps out with regular zoo. Collected Company. company. Uh. Sean can cast Collected Company, but he can't put any creatures into play. Right. He gets to look at the top six and put them on the bottom. Which he still needs to do that. I think Sean's kind of given up on this particular game but i mean he did he cast he did cast collected company so he yeah technically right. should resolve the spell right let me go uh, i've already drawn yeah i i don't think it's i don't think we're gonna be able to back yeah we can't rewind so he's that. just gonna close like return. yeah okay and we might see a concession here yeah okay. okay all right so uh had had i been standing over the table Right. I would have made Sean resolve that collective company. Exactly. But it definitely wasn't worth running down there to, to try and rewind because they had gone too far away from it. Okay, so we see Brian Huffman take the match 2-0 Jund over Sean Carroll on OBS on Rally. We've got eight minutes left in the round. Probably, I don't think we have anything yeah, left. Not enough time. So we're going to jump back here. I'm going to talk about another one of our Child's Play events. That we have probably pulled up and propped, right? Yeah. So we, if you're just now joining us, we're talking about our Child's Play events that we are running on the weekend of December 3rd. Child's Play is an event that we run every year where we run an entire weekend of gaming events, not just Magic, but everything, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, Force of Will, X-Wing, all that stuff. Dice, uh, Dice, Dice Masters, Masters Hero Clicks, Super Smash Brothers, an entire weekend of gaming events. You can check out the Child's Play event page on our Facebook page, for Horseman Comics and Gaming. Yep. Um, so... We talked about our Commander Child's Play event. Now we're going to talk about our modern one on Saturday, December 3rd, probably starting at 1 or noon. We're still working on the start time. We're going to run a modern event that's uh, competitive REL with a yep. minimum $20 donation as the entry fee. Prizes for that event will be it'll be a play for the case event. What I mean by that is that the winners will get to choose cards out of our case. Yep. If we have... Eight players. 
first place will get to choose any card from our case as their prize. If we have 12 to 16 players, the top four will get to choose a card from our case as their prize. First place will choose first, and then it'll work its way down, second down to fourth. If we have 17 to 49 players, the top eight players will all get to choose cards from our cases. And if we hit 50, the top 16 players will all get to choose a card from our case. So if we have 50 players at this thing, and you make 16th place, you'll have 16th pick at a card from our case. Yeah, which you're probably going to get pretty good value yeah, from I that. Yeah, I mean, we have Expeditions, we have Masterpieces. There's the book promo Jason the case. Still. Yeah, we'll prob probably have Wastelands. Like, uh, we have. I, I would say that if you're anywhere near the Morgantown area, even if you're an hour or so away, it's definitely a great event to come out to. Yep. You're um, all you. Every dollar that you donate is going to go to the West Virginia University Children's Hospital. We're going to have door prizes, too. We're going to give away a uh, Plains Chase... Blah. The Plains Chase play, Anthology. Play, the Plains Chase Anthology. We're going to give that away as a door prize. We have a framed, uh, unhinged island then, yep. lithograph that was donated by Brian Huffman, who we just saw went on camera. We're going to give away that as a door prize. Yep. And some other stuff too that we'll we got other players to do donating it. other things and if you can't make it out and you feel like you still want to make a donation uh you can either just message us on facebook and we can take care of that donation for you if you mm -hmm. live pretty far away from us or if you can just make it in locally but you can't make it that weekend just come by stop in and say hey i want to make a donation to child's play and you can do that as well and all of it helps uh for sure. everything yeah any anything you can do and if nothing else we will most likely be streaming that on twitch so yep. if you can't come in if you can't if you don't you're not able to make a donation just check us check out the event on twitch and see some great modern because we've, yeah. we've had gr two great matches so far we've got two more great matches to go and i'm sure every match we stream at that event will be great and then depending on how slow or how quickly matches get done we may be able to throw another game on to the stream and with some maybe some commentators maybe we can try our hand at some commentating some pokemon some pokemon i've been meeting